Welcome to Hayes Memorial UMC Online. The purpose of Hayes Memorial UMC is valuing all people, discovering faith, and engaging community. If you'd like to know more about our church, please visit www.hayesmemorialumc.org. Savior 
and life more abundant and free. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. O'er us and no more had a minion For more than conquerors we are Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, He promised. Believe Him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying His perfect salvation to tell Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow in the light of his glory and grace. Face to face, distracted. Luke chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. When some were speaking about the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And Jesus said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines, and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents, and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to Hayes Memorial UMC Online. My name is Joshua. I am the pastor of Hayes Memorial UMC, and I'm so glad you're joining us online this morning. So in 2014, Ashley and I were in the process of a lot of new changes. We had just moved from Lexington, Kentucky to Dayton, Ohio. We were new parents. Our son at the time was about nine months old. And I was starting a new job as a supply pastor at Higher Ground United Methodist Church. Ashley, my wife, also started a new job transferring to a different Cinemark that was located in Huber Heights. Now, because of her work schedule, there were times that I had to take our almost one-year-old son to work with me at church. Now, you got to understand something. I was the only person in the church building most days because Higher Ground didn't have any other staff. They couldn't afford any other staff. 
And so one day I was all alone with Silas in my office working on the order of worship. And at one point, I realized I had forgotten to do something. And so I immediately got up, went into the next room to grab what I needed. And I can't remember what it was or why I thought it was so important, but I left my son, Silas, in my office because it was only gonna take me a few seconds. However, what I didn't realize is that because I was so distracted by trying to get things done and by watching my nine month old at the same time, I had left my church keys on my desk in my office. And my office door was one of those doors that manually locked and unlocked. You had to manually unlock it. You couldn't just open it with the key, which I had not done. In other words, I locked my keys and my nine month old son in my office and had locked myself out. <laughs> I cannot tell you the amount of fear and panic that set in. I was literally trying to convince my nine month old baby to grab the keys off my desk and then to crawl over and slide them under the door. And then Silas started tugging on the phone wire and he was slowly but surely pulling my phone off my desk and I was so afraid that he was going to pull the phone on top of himself. I literally had my face pressed up against the window, pointing and yelling to him, stop it, don't do that, stop. I eventually had to call one of my members that had a key to my office. And when Dan answered the phone, I sheepishly explained the situation to him. And all I heard on the other end of the line was a loud, ah, ha, 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 But luckily, Dan came, helped me out, and Silas was fine. He's still fine. I was fine. But I tell this story because it reminds me of the dangers of becoming or being distracted. And here's the thing. We live in an ever-increasing distracted world, don't we? More than 57% of teens interviewed in one research study said social media distracts them from doing homework. And 54% admitted that they sometimes ignore other people that they are with to browse social media apps. It's not just teens, though. 75% of Americans agree that phone notifications kill focus at the workplace. And most of them blame apps like social media. According to recent data, the average person, the average person spends three hours and 15 minutes on their phone each day. And one in five smartphone users spend upwards of four and a half hours on average each day on their phones. And on average, people check their phones 58 times per day and almost 52% of those phone checks occur during work hours. Plus, it's not just that, but about 400 fatal crashes happen each year as a direct result of texting and driving. And that number increases to over 30,000 when you consider distracted driving as a whole, according to the NHTSA. I think it's safe to say that with the rise of technological advances comes more ways for us to be distracted or distract ourselves. Sometimes we are just uncomfortable without any kind of background noise or with silence. For instance, we distract ourselves with TV. We distract ourselves with podcasts. We distract ourselves with social media. We distract ourselves with our phones. And as we come to today's scripture passage, I am able to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because it reminds me that I am not the only one that struggles to stay focused at times. This is Jesus's last trip to Jerusalem. 
It's right before the Passover and Jesus is spending his time during the day teaching at the temple. And at night, Jesus is breaking off by himself to go pray the Mount of Olives, something Jesus has done over and over again, a repetition for his life of service and prayer. And Jesus knows at this point that he is about to be betrayed. He's about to be arrested. He's going to be unjustly tried and crucified. And no doubt all of this is on his mind as he teaches during the day and prays at night. And Jesus here is laser focused on living out God's calling upon his life because he knows that his calling matters. But at one point, Jesus and his disciples are walking through Jerusalem and some of his disciples start to marvel at the beauty of the temple. Now the temple was a building of shining white marble and gold with bronze entrance doors. It was said that you could not look at the temple in daylight directly or it would blind you. The attention to detail in its constructions is exemplified by the placing of gold spikes on the roof line of the building to prevent birds from setting on the temple and soiling it. Beautiful is an understatement of just how awe-inspiring the temple actually was. And these disciples are taking it all in. They are mesmerized by the beauty of this building. But Jesus, recognizing their distraction, recognizing that they are not focused on the same things that he is focused on, the things that matter, Jesus recognizing that they're distracted from their calling, that they're distracted from his teaching, that they're distracted from the ministry he has called them to, says something that would have caught their attention real fast. Their mouths would have dropped wide open. And Jesus says, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All of it will be thrown down. Talk about a buzzkill, right? Talk about a deadly downer. But here's the thing, Jesus knows the danger of their distraction. Jesus knows that the next few days for them are going to be rough. They'll need to stay focused on the mission, especially when everything else seems to be falling apart. Jesus knows that their spiritual growth and their ability to persevere will depend on them learning to focus on him. and what he's taught them. Not the beauty of this world, not the busyness of it, not its brokenness or its hardships that they will face, but him. Jesus wants to remind them that their focus is his calling on their lives, his commandments of love and his ministry and his presence with him because what they are called to, who they are, and who Jesus is, is the foundation of their lives, the foundation of their growth and perseverance in life. As I think about this, I can't help but wonder what distracts us from God's calling on our lives. And just because you may not be a pastor or a religious leader, that does not mean you don't have a calling. You do. We all do. We are all called. If we give ourselves to Jesus, we are all called to live a life of love, service, and faith. I wonder what distracts us from obeying God's commandment to love God and to love others. I wonder what distracts us from partnering with God in ministry and in service and what he's already doing around us and the lives of those around us. But most of all, most of all, I wonder what distracts us from giving our full attention to Christ 
on a daily basis. How often, how often do we allow our phones to distract us from spending time with God through prayer and scripture reading? How often do we let social media steal our conversations with those who are around us? And sure, that little device, much like Herod's temple, is awe-inspiring at times, but how often do we let its allure distract us from focusing on what is most important? our relationship with God and our relationship with others, our own spiritual growth. You know, I have to go here because I think the text and the spirit incites me to, you know, I find it interesting that the thing the disciples are most distracted by is a place of worship, a place of worship that they had invested in because some of their money went to help manage temple upkeep. And while I love our church building, while I love the sanctuary, I think that it is a wonderful tool that God has blessed us with. I also can't help but wonder if we don't sometimes allow this building to distract us from the people who are outside of it. I had to ask myself a few of these questions how are we partnering with Jesus in his mission to make disciples of all nations if we spend most of our time inside these four walls? How are we seeking the lost, finding the lost, if we only hang out with the found? How are we fulfilling our mission to value all people, discover faith, and engage community if we are not outside as much as we are inside? I wonder what it would mean for each of us to look Jesus in the eye face to face and to hear him say, all these things you see, a day will come that not one stone will be left upon another. I don't know about you, but I can answer for myself. I often find myself distracted by things that I know won't last. My cell phone won't last. It won't be long before I'll need another one. And one day, <laughs> there will be better technology than my little iPhone. This building won't last. Much of what we see around us won't last. I think part of the conversation Jesus wants us to have this morning with him and with each other is about shifting our focus from worldly things to things that are eternal. So friends, may we heed the words of this gospel message today, not about a, a fear or a worry about the end times, because that's where we often go when we hear these words, not trying to determine when that end will come, but recognizing that Jesus is tremendously concerned, tremendously concerned about all the worldly distractions in our lives that impede our seeking, our seeing, and our living the way, the truth, the life of Jesus. I urge you that the next time we sneak a peek at our cell phone during work or during a conversation with our child or while driving our car to think about how that distraction is impeding our focus on Jesus and on others. And I wonder if we made a tally mark of each time we caught ourselves so distracted, if it might surprise us about how so little we let the presence of Christ break in and consume us. What would it look like for each of us to make a conscious decision to cut the amount of screen time we spend every day in half and use that time giving Jesus our undivided attention in hopes that through his grace, his love, and his mercy, we might be changed from the inside out. Because the danger, the danger of our distraction is that we may never experience 
the new life or become the new creation God wants so desperately for us to become if we live a life of distraction continuously. And Jesus said it this way, I am the vine, you are the branches, abide, abide in me, and I in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Today, I make this challenge to you and to myself. The invitation is for us to turn off our phones, turn off our social media, turn off too many distractions, and to turn our eyes towards Jesus, recognizing that he is calling us to be with him. We hope that you found this service encouraging and nourishing to your faith as you seek to grow closer to God, to become like Christ through following him. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so in three different ways. In person, by mail, or online at www.hayesmemorialumc.org. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the donate button. Please prepare your heart for a blessing. Go in the love of God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, his son, in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to be disciples to make disciples, and to know that you are loved.